Okay. Well, aloha kakahiaka, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We're wow. excited to be here to talk about the topic of acceptance. Yes. So this is an illustration by Robert Beatty. So people all over the nation are talking about this term acceptance. That's amazing. At the same time, Let's roughly. Let's see. Sponsored by MailChimp. <laughs> okay. okay. So when we thought about this term acceptance, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, I feel like, weighty things. You know, you look up the definition of acceptance. And um, we like to keep things fun. So we were thinking about it more like a game show in terms of, like, oh, yeah, yeah. what do you accept, accept or, or let, let go? go. Um, and because in life, you know, there's heavy things that happen in our life. There's like mm -hmm. the everyday tasks that happen in our life. And there's constant decisions from what you wear in the morning um, of what do you accept, what do you let go of. Um, yeah. So we are going to talk about what do you choose to accept? Because there's things that you can't control, but there's a lot of things you can. Mm -hmm. So what do you choose to accept? And then what do you choose to let go of? And maybe we should start by introducing ourselves in case anyone oh, yeah. hasn't uh, Hi. heard of us or seen our work. Um, we are a husband and wife art duo, a couple, and we've been working together for over 15 years. Mm -hmm. So we, I'm Roxy. Yes, it's Roxy. And I'm Matt. Uh, we live out on the east side of Oahu in mm -hmm. Laie. So it was a beautiful drive to get out here to Honolulu. We have an art studio in Kaka'ako. So actually, this does feel very, uh, feels like part Homey. of our aina as well. But we're stoked to be here. And because we're married, we're, we kind of are used to jumping in and interrupting each other and yeah. that kind of thing. So of just it. to set the tone, that's going <laughs> to be what this talk is like. Um, All right. And so speaking about accepting or letting go, we're mm -hmm. going to speak about that in terms of our work. Um, I think we'll leave it maybe to the Q&A to if you want to ask questions of what we accept and let go of in terms of working together as a couple Ooh. or art process. We can talk all day. That's a saucy So bit. we're going to speak about it in terms of how we choose to yeah. accept or let go of things when it comes to creating our work. Yes, the creative process. So we will start with... Ooh, speaking of process, okay, so the very first treehouse that we ever designed, it was actually more of a clubhouse, is this sketch here. And for context, it was inspired by, at the time I was working at Reuse Hoi. Give it up to Reuse Hoi. It's an awesome organization. Right over there. <laughs> um, if you I, don't know what Reuse Hoi is. Yeah, Reuse Hoi is a nonprofit that deconstructs homes. It also takes donations from the community. And really their goal is to take waste out of that waste stream. Uh, houses that would have normally gotten demolitioned, smashed to pieces, and then thrown into a landfill on the west side or wherever, and like shipped off. Um, they're reselling it to the community. And while I was working there, I was just really struck with the creativity of everyday people coming in, looking at a uh, tongue and groove redwood siding and being like, well, I can make a, you know, uh, maybe Table. a garden a garden bed out of this. Or I could take these cabinets and reuse them for a different purpose. They so, were made for the kitchen, but they're going in my garage. Yeah, that exactly. Kind of thing. So this sketch actually was a conglomerate of a bunch of objects that were actually in stock at that place while I was working there. I was in the lumber yard, uh, working in the lumber yard. So there's, what do we got in there, Roxy? We've got a okay. menagerie of things. There's a lot of lamps if you go mm -hmm. into Rios, Hawaii, like chandeliers. And I mean, I was always looking at those chandeliers like, where could I stick that? Um, <laughs> in the so garden. So we live vicariously through our work. You know, we might not to be able to physically build yeah. a lot of what we design, but that's why we draw it, because then it can at least manifest that way, and maybe someone else can build it. Yeah, yeah we, we, um, I think this is where we first stumbled on the idea of combining the concept of, okay, if you're gonna live in a place, you also have to think of like, how are you gonna get food in that place? And I think the, uh, the epitome of that idea is the clawfoot tub, which there's like, the clawfoot tubs are awesome, and we had clawfoot tubs over there, and the idea of a lo'i, so it's like, a lo'i in a clawfoot tub, and then there's a fish tank. And I think initially we were like, oh, this is kind of like the idea of aquaponics. Mm -hmm. right? we kinda, you could grow your protein. It looks more like a goldfish, but maybe that's just a baby tilapia. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to get huge. And <laughs> um, so we actually, our first business together was a t-shirt company. Oh, yeah. So we had these line drawings that we hand screen printed onto organic t-shirts. And so we wanted to have a sustainable clothing company mm -hmm. that focused on the art. So we didn't have our brand like huge on the front or anything like that. No. We just wanted it to be about the art. Um, and so this was one of the designs for those t-shirts. 
Yep. And I'll go ahead and I think we can click. And to then the you next can see, one. oh, real quick, that was the first quarter pipe I ever oh, drew yeah. into a treehouse. That was the beginning. And we were like, oh, we surf as well, so let's throw in boards because if you're going to live there, you're going to have to be able to eat. You're going to have to have solar power. We threw solar power in there. To charge your phone. And have fun. All yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, that was the start. Okay. In the beginning. In the beginning. Okay. Um, and then we also liked the idea of deconstruction. So mm -hmm. taking things and really exploring like what makes them tick, what are they made out of. Yep. And um, here's a little close up of this painting. So the, the first <laughs> image that you saw was a pencil drawing. This one is a small painting, I would say about one foot by two feet. Yep. Um, so we took the idea of the blueprint, but it's a blueprint of a tree house and what's kind of cool is if you look in the bottom here you can actually see like this is the blueprint for the tree house so you have to plan ahead for a tree house because yeah. if you don't have a tree you're going to need to plant one yeah. so we're starting from square one first you, have to, yep. first you have to get that shovel over there mm -hmm. and then if you follow the dotted line the it's saying you need to dig and then you have the hole to then put in this right. little seedling which will then in grow a few into years, yeah. You know, grow into a tree, and it's only once you have that seed planted, the idea planted for a tree house down the line, you are able to actually build it, and that's the elevation plan here. And we'll throw in things that are kind of relevant to sustainability, like okay, I also have to have the optimum solar azimuth kind of covered because I also did a lot of solar panel work. That was another one of my jobs. Um, solar and panel installation. Solar panel installation, yeah. Um, and then... So that's one of the things we accept. Like, yeah. we accept the convention of what a traditional blueprint looks like, you know, the blue mm -hmm. and um, background with the white drawing, but then how can we kind of make it more fun? And instead of building a house with four walls, we're going to... Um, four walls and a half it into pipe. a tree house. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, add that too. Yeah. And um, we like to have playful details for people who take the time to really look at things. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm zooming into that top right there and then showing you here, just kind of like the mundane, we like to celebrate the mundane mm -hmm. processes that we'd never really think about, but are actually um, kind of adopted by everyone. So we've accepted that this is the way that you send out mail, <laughs> is that you, you write your letter or type it out, uh -huh. or you know, now there's email, but this is more fun. No, analog, um, analog. So you have like maybe a nice card for your mom, and then you <laughs> put it into the mailbox, mm -hmm. and then you close the mailbox door, and then you follow the arrows and put up the flag. And then that is universal for right. a mail person. I have something to send. So that's kind of the things that we like to pick up on. And throughout the drawing, there's yeah, things like that. I think where we talk about process being so important, what we're doing in, in these styles, and we can actually go to the ne next slide too, is we're celebrating the idea of process as an aesthetic that's beautiful. Um, and sometimes we're always, like we always talk about how the end result is such a romanticized idea. Like, oh, I just gotta get to the end, I just gotta finish this. But really, um, for us, we, we really love the process of building something or even like thinking about building something. So here we have another tree house where we've fully diverted from the idea of like a very normal looking home with a roof that's normal like this is so that's something we let go of <laughs> <laughs> like we accept that you need to have walls in a house but we let go of the idea that it needs to be in a rectangle like why can't your house be in the shape of a boom box if your um you know music of choice is old school hip-hop which we like to listen to while we work mm -hmm. um then this would be one of our dream houses so letting go of what the expectations of what a house should look like mm -hmm. and then embracing the possibility of what could something look like. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna have these little close-ups here. This is a close-up of an arcade game yes. system that's up there at the top. Yeah, and I guess what we are, maybe, I don't know, we can maybe talk about how in, in this sort of style, you're starting to see that we have this like sense of humor, we enjoy puns, like for example, the mixtape is an actual, the mixtape is called the tape deck. Like that area right there. It's so the actual, lanai deck yes, is the you. tape deck portion of the boombox right. treehouse. Yeah, and so we imagined that that little um, retail front there is called the mixtape where uh -huh. you can pull up and get your favorite mixed drink, right. whether that your mix is like a green smoothie or a margarita or like a blended coffee. You know, everybody has their own mixtape, so mm -hmm. that's what we figured this place is. It serves you your special mix. Yep. Um, 
drawing, or the mix that you made for someone else. Drawing not to scale as well. That was important to put yeah. there. Yeah, these always say drawings not to scale. I don't want. <laughs> we uh, we're always asked so like, clear. oh, are you? Do you guys? What does your guys' house look like? You know, because we're actually building <laughs> our own house. <laughs> So there's a thing called uh, permitting and OSHA, and there's all these things that... Standards of safety. Yes. In in life, we have to accept that those things are realities. But in in artwork, we can go as crazy as possible. We reject them. They're so dangerous, (laughs) our tree houses. Like, I don't know, one fall and you're dead. Yeah. So when we design these, we always um, imagine a character Mm -hmm. or a narrative that goes along with them. So we purposely don't put a character or figure in the piece so that you can imagine yourself there. But we try to include these hints or like props Mm -hmm. as a way for you to imagine what the lifestyle is of the person living there. Um, So we have, you know, the skate ramps, the arcade, that person gets hungry or you get hungry. So you need to have your gardens where you're growing your own food. Mm -hmm. The top handle of the boom box is... um, what do we call it? Like observation the observation deck, deck of yeah. some kind. Yeah. So you can walk across it and look at at the sunrise if you're <laughs> up that early. Um, I, I think on this one we really wanted to um, play with the idea of green walls. So a lot of our tree houses will have green roofs. They'll have maybe some sort of water catchment system. You could also look at well maybe the skate ramp doubles as a way of collecting water. Um, so you're always sort of uh, juxtaposing these ideas that are really really lighthearted almost we can also say like childish at times yeah. but um a but sense we of take joy those is, childish aspects very seriously yes and it, and it doesn't <laughs> have to be a serious uh theme for it to have like yeah seriously awesome ramifications right <laughs> and that's actually my new quote that i came up with while we were writing this talk was mm-hmm. thinking about like our work doesn't have to be serious to be mm-hmm. taken seriously there it is yeah. So that's, that's our new catchphrase. <laughs> um, and so at the top there, we've got the dimensions of the surfboard and the skateboard. So it's like taking these things that we just kind of have around our house, but giving them a moment where, mm-hmm. you know, we're considering, like, what are the measurements of this thing? And it gets its own spot, you yeah. know. So everything in our lives, we have it for a reason. So giving it, you know, that meaning that it deserves. We got one more boom box. OK, we do. So, so this that, is it in color. Yeah, this medium is digital. Um, we did the other ones, they were on wood panel. But this one is on, um, on the iPad. And what do we have to say about this one? I guess it's just kind of... Accepting new technology as it comes mm, along. Yeah, we have an yes art studio. No. I know we might have a question about that later. We have an art studio full <laughs> of uh, crayons and pencils and brushes that don't get any use right we now. We haven't used them in years. And when I walk into our art studio, they just look at me and shake their heads slowly. And just, <laughs> You, you left love. me. Yeah. No, but it's, um, that's part of the reality of our of our changing workflow. Right, and I think digital it's medium. the idea of you accept or let go of tools mm-hmm. or techniques as you mm-hmm. learn. Hopefully, we're always kind of learning. And then sometimes you get tired of the new things and yeah. you go back to the old things. Because, no, I'm feeling it for yeah, sure. Um, nostalgia or just you actually work better in those older media. Yeah. So that's why so as we said. go along, you'll see um, different ways that we work because for ourselves or for clients it requires um different yeah, nice. tools Ooh, samurai this is one of house. my favorites so this is going back to that same um style where it was an assemblage mm-hmm. of it's kind of hard to maybe we should it. talk about what we're actually looking at so this okay. is yes. a one by one wood painting slash drawing yeah. one foot, one by, foot one by, one by one foot um and these are individual pieces of wood so talking about process accepting and denying we thought like, oh, it'd be kind of cool to have these wooden pieces like a puzzle. And Mm -hmm. um, the person who has it could maybe take out the pieces, maybe mix them around, put them back in. Like we love the tactile quality of wood. They had a really good sound too when they snapped into place. It was like click, 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 click. click, click. Yeah, kind of like dominoes almost. It's good. Um, But then we realized that if you hung it on your wall, then maybe the pieces would fall out. And then what if the person forgot what order they actually were supposed to go? I don't know. There was just like, what are we? We're trying to do too much here. Like, let's let go of that whole puzzle idea, but still um, have the edges kind of rounded so you could tell that they were individual pieces of wood that got put together. And then the papers are all kind of detritus, Mm -hmm. like. Uh, coffee stained mm-hmm. graph paper. Yeah, like I think we actually origami paper. I actually took a coffee cup right here where it's it's got the, um, the title there, and I like wet it and I plopped it on there, and I felt like 
we're just celebrating like, like the tactile making. nature. Like when you say like the edges were rounded, I think a lot of like maybe like a Tom Sachs work or something like that where you're like celebrating plywood or whatever medium for what it is and not trying to like make hide it something the fact, else. Make it super slick. So maybe um, incorporating a little wabi sabi ism as mm -hmm. well. I don't know if that's an ism, but wabi sabi concept of like celebrating the natural state of something, the distress, distress nature. Mm -hmm. um, but this one was such a fun one. This was our favorite one, I think. Yeah, I just really enjoyed the cherry blossom, how it was inspired by the origami paper, and then yep. we brought it into Where else um, we kind of the sides of the mask there on the panels, yeah. and then it repeats on the side on the right. left there. And so... Um, or like the tea ceremony up there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like celebrating process and the Daily way things ritual. are done and like, you know, really enjoying that little bit of, a little slice of experience. And then uh, the rake, rake with yes. the sand garden here. Yeah, it looks garden. like Japanese writing, but if you tilted your head, it says Matt Roxy Wooden Wave. Just so that's how we signed our piece. We just, started, yeah, we just signed it <laughs> Sideways, way. and then the type typeface uh, mm -hmm. ish that we hand drew uh, is made to look like the Japanese characters, which would be traditionally read <laughs> vertically. Um, I'm going to yeah. skip ahead because. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. And there was a, this is a mural we did of that. So a lot of times our, our work will start, start small as a sketch or a thumbnail. We have a sketchbook full of these, and then it'll be maybe turned into a smaller painting. And then down the line, when we find a, a fitting wall or a mural um, location, we'll, we'll do a mural version. This one was in... This was for Worldwide San, Walls San Jose, in San Jose. Yeah. Japantown. I want to say 2019. Mm -hmm. um, Still there. Love that yeah, one. so this was on the side of a... Japanese kind of bento, bento spot. mochi ice cream shop. Yeah. Um, so on the side of the sand garden there, which is inspired the by the garden. Hawaiian Islands, that's why the one with the tree kind of looks yeah. like Big Island, um, there's a little table and we put a plate with tea and then mochi ice mochi. cream on top of it. And, so. and this design was selected by um, the business owner. So it's one of those things too, like we don't just roll up and be like, you're getting a samurai tree house. It was like <laughs> in the context of that community, we made sure that it was okay. With mm -hmm. them, we presented that sketch, and they were just like, we love it. And this was a mural location that... People had, had tried to paint on before, and the yeah, business and they owner like, always they said no. always like, no, <laughs> no, thank you. We prefer a bare wall. <laughs> and, and now it's like one of the favorite. I, I think it gets a lot of love because that town is so cool. Japan town. Japan town, San Jose. If you're yeah. ever in the area, very it's cool. Rad little spot. Homey spot. Okay. Um, so, and just to jump to the idea of accepting or letting go of, mm -hmm. I think one thing we think of about a lot is limitations and how we put them on ourselves. And sometimes we say no to projects or things because of time or energy. And um, we're, we like to be yes people. So it's like, yeah, we want to do that project. Oh, that sounds so cool. But what would we be giving up if we said yes to that project? Um, so knowing that it's a choice, even if someone asks and that we teaches to our kid who's six, you know, even if you ask nicely, that doesn't mean I'm saying yes, you know, <laughs> can you eat that candy? Thank you for saying please, but no, you can, we cannot, you know. Um, so when it comes to painting murals, if you'd asked us about 12 years ago, mm -hmm. do you think you could paint a mural of this um, painting? We would have said maybe because we'd never done it before. Um, so that's something that we had to accept like, we haven't done it before. Mm -hmm. This could get really weird and it could look terrible. Um, or we could accept, like, this is a challenge we should take on and yep. try it. And our limits are put on by ourselves. So let's give it a go. And now murals are most, right. at least half of what we yeah. do now. Um, and I think if we can even go to the next slide, I think. Um, but based on that concept, like, these things are really complex sort of um, mashups of different skill sets, different ideas, but everything kind of starts small. And so when we when we are intimidated by the concept of a mural or the concept of a finished project and um, you get kind of caught up in the, in the inner workings of getting to that point, a lot of times it helps, and I find this really helps for me because I get caught up in details, is like breaking uh, problems and ideas down into small bits, right? And I actually just had a really difficult um, creative problem that I was working through with Roxy a few days ago, or maybe it was last week. And 
I lost sight of the fact that like the problems are a multitude of things, but if you break each problem down one at a time, it's actually digestible. It's doable. That way. It's doable. And I had luckily I had Roxy there to like snap me out of that sort of spiral of Bring like, oh, I can't, I can't <laughs> get through this, you know. And so here you go. Um, this one right here is the uh, the double hole canoe lay stand. Yeah, um, so thinking about our clubhouses, our yeah. tree houses, how can they be in different environments? So why not on the ocean? Yeah. Like, you know, we yeah. can let go of the fact that we've never seen that before, but why not? I think that this one of all of our designs that we've shown thus far is probably the most doable. <laughs> 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 like, I feel like that's out Sand Island. There might already be a house that looks like that, you know, like people <laughs> living on, on houseboats. Like, that's legit. Just needs a fresh coat of paint. I would love to see a lay stand that just floats up to you in the lineup. Or maybe they'd have to be a snack snack stand like you're, <laughs> you're sitting there and you're like oh, i could really go Get for a, a sandwich <laughs> yeah a musubi know. stand i think that's going to happen in waikiki at some point yeah. um and so taking these different you know pieces that might be let go of and we might find them at a thrift store or on the side of the road and putting them together and giving them new life we thought why not a whole pirate ship like, if it got stranded on an island, like, why not turn that upside down and turn it into this surf yeah. and science research outpost? Um, so rethinking scale of things that we can reuse. Mm -hmm. And because it, our work is fantastical and we've let go of any limitations of what's uh, normal or practical or realistic, um, we can do things like this, where even the pirate's rum bottles got reused in, to make the chandelier that's hanging over the skate ramp there. Yeah. Um, we imagine the character that lives in here is a biologist who studies the coral reefs. And so um, inside is his office, but because he lives out here, or she, yes. at um, four months possibly at a time, there's the green roofs there, there's surfboards because there's this lovely surf break off to the side. Maybe it's a residency, yeah. you know? Okay, like a, let's apply like to a, this residency. A marine biologist dream <laughs> residency. And yeah. it's like very selective. And to get on board, you have to like, to be the top-notch cream of the crop marine biologist but then when you get there everything is taken care of you yeah got you've got the um, the canoe is your transportation right. to land you know when yeah. you need to and, restock and then on to, supplies oh, sorry to mitigate the idea of like well you know you're building on top of the reef and and like how is that isn't that destructive um I, we thought it would be really cool that the reef of there's an artificial reef component to the pylons and so it's like you're, part studying, of the ecosystem. Yeah, you're part of the ecosystem in that way. But. And then there's the uh, deep sea submersible. Mm -hmm. There's one that's pretty well known on the continent um, called Alvin. And yeah, we figured go. that this is his Hawaiian cousin, Kimo. So Kimo. in really little letters, <laughs> it's Kimo the submersible. Kimo the sub. <clears throat> yep. And then why not take objects that you traditionally think of as being on a street and put them up in a tree and recycle your beloved mm -hmm. uh, VW Vanagon there. Yeah. So this one's in Nashville. And um, because that's a place that's well known for music and because of the location of this, we put we the character or storyline that we figured for this one is that, you know, the band has retired. This used to be the the band that would go on the road to do concerts and live shows. But everybody's kind of. Uh, settle down, you know, some of the band members have kids or yeah. maybe they've, um, you know, have some other interests or a job where they can't be on the road all the time. So the old broke down van has then been put up into trees, but the band members still get together and like to jam. And so on the top <laughs> there, they've got the guitar and the drum set, mic stand. So even in their non-transient lives, they can still relive the good old days and hang out together. Yep, that's it. Ooh, this is one of my favorites. We did this one recently. Um, and the concept behind this piece was reimagining the idea of farming in the future. Um, and we really wanted to think about the concept of ahupua'a, living in, in nature and acknowledging the relationship between Malka and Makai, a very Hawaiian indigenous, indigenous concept throughout the world of um, permaculture. And uh, mixing it with technology, we thought, OK, so for example, if we do a close up of this hale, which is actually up top left over there. So what we're accepting is oh, yes, historical facts and architecture yeah. and objects. 
Um, so that was part of our research. Uh -huh. And then what we're letting go of is the fact that we don't know what it's going to look like in the future. Right. So this is where we can have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, one, of the, one of my favorite parts about this one is the concept of solar panels were prevalent throughout everything. But the idea of like the solar panels also being um, on the on the roof, a way of ventilating the hale, the house. So they and move. So they move. They can open up, kind of like the gill, uh, gills or like the scales on a fish, and then in that way they can also follow the path of the sun. And while they're doing that, you know, they're moving upwards. They're opening up and allowing air to come in and out. Um, mm -hmm. They're clear. They can kind of tell, but the solar panels are clear so that photosynthesis can happen while you're also doing photovoltaic energy collection. Um, and we've got our pollinators here in the corner. So those are beehives. Beehives. Here, those kind of hexagonal uh, shapes. And then everything here has kind of like these floating mm -hmm. screens because we imagine that all the measurements and data that you need to do this farming, like pH level, temperature, sunlight ratios, all those kinds of things will be available on these screens. Mm -hmm. And everything that he's talking about, the moving of those panels, happens automatically mm -hmm. in relation to right. the trajectory of the sun. Uh, and <clears throat> it can sense that it's raining, so it might close it, or it might open it so that the plants can get water. Um, so we're using the traditional Hawaiian architecture as the basis and to give it um, that sense of place, mm -hmm. but then um, using these ideas of technology to reimagine how you could use things like the umeke or the wooden bowl. And here we've decided that it is an algae lamp. Yeah. So the kind of like the bioluminescence of the algae is what creates the light. Um, and then the lupe or kite is a photovoltaic panel yeah. that's movable. And can kind of it's like flying fly up the there. It's taking data while it's up there. It's making sure. Wind speed. Right, wind speed, weather conditions. Humidity. Maybe it's it's monitoring different Hawaii, seeing if, the, you know, can this have a area camera on it. more. Yeah. Um, and then that's a pollinator safe wind turbine. Yes. So that's based. Vertical turbine, yeah. Yeah. On the um, feather pole. I'm blanking on Kahili. the name right now. Yeah, Kahili, there you go. Yeah. Um, and so that's standing outside of the entrances right. to the hale there. And this hale is, uh, because hale were traditionally uh, thatched, this one is actually thatched, but it's a green, like, it's just green wall, you know? So the idea of like, it actually being an edible uh, <laughs> surface, an edible wall, something that you actually like, it's, it's irrigated by the aquaponics tank on the bottom there. So all the pipes are going up and, you know, Fully, fully Lots integrating to eat the idea. in this place. <laughs> yeah. It's very abundant. Yeah. Okay. And so in liking storytelling and narratives, we're also appreciative of other kind of world building um, stories, locations, mm -hmm. um, brands, artists, that kind of thing. So Star Wars it has so much going on, more so now than ever, I feel like. <laughs> So this is our collaboration with Gavin Murai, who is an awesome um, letterer and graphic designer. And he is our, was our neighbor at Lana Lane Art Studios. And so we designed the Darth Vader treehouse, and mm -hmm. then he lettered this phrase, together we can rule the galaxy. And in the, in the movie, it's more ominous, but I was thinking like, it sounds kind of fun, like together, like together <laughs> we can rule the galaxy. And I was thinking, you know, in our narrative, Darth Vader, um, we have an alternate reality where he faked his death and retired to a planet far, far away and, <laughs> and grew his own food and just chilled, you know, he was relaxed out there. And he was thinking, like, together we can live sustainably and make changes in the world and yeah. rule the galaxy in peace and harmony. He was, so. just, <laughs> he was just so stressed out by the need to conquer. Mm -hmm. And that power struggle, like, it just, it's just not it's healthy. It's too much. So Heavy was the crown, heavy, you know? Heavy crown. Um, so to, to give you some close-ups of the details. So this was the original. So that mural original happened after we designed the artwork first. Mm -hmm. um, and the Death Star disco ball. Yeah, he's like, he's... <laughs> got the force so he's like yeah, an unreal b-boy and he's got the disco ball he's got the half pipe he's got on the side flat flanges i guess of his helmet that's where he has his vertical garden mm -hmm. um because 
he realizes that, you know, when you're in the garden and you're growing things and you're caring for them, you're just such a better person. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so if you remember back to that kind of goldfish-looking fishbowl in the first clubhouse. It's gotten a little better in this um, one. So we kind of learned to integrate it into the architecture of our clubhouses. Yeah. So here he has his tilapia growing, and it's on the nose. It's on his nose. Part of the mask, if you see that it's there. It's a bit on the nose. Um, so evolving as artists, um, instead of kind of this just like collection of stuff mm -hmm. stacked together, um, that was kind of part of our research was actually looking at architecture books and figuring out how do we have something that is functional but also aesthetic. So it needs to have that nose bridge so that it's mm. recognizable as Darth Vader, but how can we turn that into something more interesting? So that's where our fish fishbowl became a fish yeah. nose. I, I feel like we, we really, um, we've started to do that, I think, more in that we'll take uh, something that's not um, endemically a house, you know, a helmet, a face, an animal. Uh, we have one that's a wolf, we have one that's a puel. And how can we reimagine it so that it's architecturally livable and embodies all the things we're trying to talk about? Um, so, you know, we've got a Stormtrooper one here. Um, again, the narrative is always very key to how we build these. Like for this one, I believe our concept was the clone Stormtroopers um, after the dissolution of that empire. They, they're kind of like floating around the galaxy wondering like, what do we do with all this they time? They need purpose. What do we, need? we need purpose. We were, we were designed to be you know, warmongers. But now what they do is they teach kids how to skate. And <laughs> they have these little like gardening centers garden. throughout the universe. Yeah, they teach kids how to because skate. Because they're really efficient garden. and they're good at being in they're rows. Efficient. That's right. <laughs> so. so their rows are like really nicely done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You keep a so tight they're really, ship. You know, efficient, consistent, so great for teaching your kids yeah. about systems. Exactly. Um, and then we don't want to forget you know, they had hanging. such terrible aim anyway, so like, <laughs> yeah. they're better at skating. <laughs> they are. Um, so there's a, a laundry line hanging up. Oh, so yeah. that's uh, Darth Vader's cape is hanging out to dry. That's a fun detail. Yeah, figuratively, um, literally figuratively hung his cape up. Yeah, he's hung his cape up. Yeah. And then, but his favorite possession is that big telescope up at the top where he likes to sit in the evenings and gaze out at the galaxy mm -hmm. without feeling the need to conquer it. Yeah. That's a good feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good old Darth. Yep. OK, so bring it to the present. present. Um, this is the illustration that we designed for our Hawaii Walls mural for this year. So if Ooh. you go um, onto Vineyard and you're looking out at the freeway. Palama Settlement. Right at Palama Settlement, mm -hmm. you'll see a mural of this. Yeah, um, and we love uh, sea creatures. In particular, we love manta rays. We've We've uh, been able to swim with them. I've seen them a few times in the water. And uh, the thing that's unique about manta rays, I think, is that they're these big, beautiful creatures that are actually very agile. And while they're swimming, their, their mouths are often open and they're filter feeders. And uh, so we took that concept. We turned it into an undersea submersible craft. We threw the wooden wave kind of flavoring on it with the half pipe and the holly and the slide. But the concept behind this one was that it's actually inhaling all the beach, or not the float some, but the jet some, but the microplastics, yeah, the ocean plastic, mm -hmm. that great Pacific gyre, and it's just like <laughs> inhaling it. Sucking up all the trash. Maybe turning it into bubble power mm -hmm. out the back. <laughs> so we have the conventions of our work, you know, with the kind of clubhouse theme, but we decided... Hmm. Like we've done a lot of things on land, but mm. why not take it to the ocean? Yeah, um, underwater. And so, letting go of the idea of these kind of clubhouses having to live somewhere there's mm -hmm. where there's readily available oxygen, because um, your imagination lives <laughs> here, and so anything goes. So we're letting go of how would someone survive mm -hmm. underwater, you know, for months, and how would they get enough light to grow all those things? Like mm -hmm. it'll happen, you know. We'll figure it out. It surfaces. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was our idea. so that's what's cool is <laughs> we imagine that this surfaces and then it collects. So the, on the sides there, you can see that those are solar mm -hmm. panels. So it collects the sunlight and that's what powers yeah. this machine. And then it can go back down into the deep. And and then also on the um, some of the patterning, um, we were inspired. Well, the idea of this being an Oceania spanning uh, watercraft, sea craft. Mm -hmm. um, so going throughout all of the different islands and um, throughout the Pacific throughout the Pacific and that's why we have like 
We have some Hawaiian style, um, uh, uhi inspired imagery, uh, and then also that that spiral, which kind of doubles as the eyes, is is taken from like Maori koru. ideas of the the koru, um, and so like just taking drawing inspiration wherever we can kind of find it, and then and acknowledging imagine, those sources. Yeah, and then we imagine that the biologist living in this craft oh, yeah, so is studying the data from the trash that's collected. Mm -hmm. um, but they need somewhere to live, so that's their holly. There's a nice um, comfy chair kind of swinging from the half pipe. So this person likes to skate, and then when they get sweaty, they can jump into that slide there and pop out into their ponds, the refresh. Hopefully not hit their taro. <laughs> yeah, <but> <laughs> that's where they've got their taro growing um, for their food, but it's also a nice place to just relax and take a break. And after they've cooled off, they can mm -hmm sit in that uh, lounge chair next to their library shelf and read a good book, because uh, they may or may not have internet access while they're yeah. out there. So going you know what, back to old technologies and reading a good old book. Yeah, You know what's funny is we've done murals with um, schools, and I think one of the most interesting thing is, things is how much kids, when they look at our, our work, are are concerned with safety sometimes. You wouldn't think that, like kids are crazy. <laughs> but they're like, oftentimes they're the ones that'll stop us like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What whoa. happens if you fall off? Where that? that slide goes right into the glass. Like that's that's not, <laughs> that's not cool. Like you're gonna, you need a foam pit or something like that. And, yeah. And that's really awesome because it makes them think, okay, yeah, maybe we do need to put a if foam pit. If I were gonna there. build this. Yeah, like that zip line <laughs> needs to have a pillow at the end. You know, they'll do that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, they're concerned, but like not really put off by the idea oh. of like these fantastical things happening. Like, yes. like why not? So we <laughs> it goes back to the uh, not accepting the rules of gravity in our mm -hmm. world. Yeah, <laughs> we don't accept the rules of gravity oh. at all in our work. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so we're coming to the oh, end yeah, here. So there. coming back around to those boom boxes. Mm -hmm. um, so we were able to paint this as one of the biggest murals we'd ever done. Um, but what's fun is that you see our kiddo here see at the bottom. He's for, for scale. You can see him down there. shadow of a human. Um, but you'll notice that there's these kind of um, entryways to like utility rooms or like a I back section escape. to the parking yeah, lot, like a escape. escape route or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so that comes into play in the next slide. Um, so there's our kiddo. Our and little gorilla muralist. Yeah. So while we were having a conversation with somebody at our wall, um, my dad had brought him by to say hi to us while we were painting, because this is kind of like our workstation, you know, so bring yeah. the kid to work day. Um, <laughs> and while we were talking and had our backs turned, our kiddo had picked up a roller that was in a paint uh, pan <laughs> behind us and started painting on that wall that's, you know, in there. Mm -hmm. And I remember Matt, I think you were on a ladder, and you looked down, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was, was in that painting. lift, and I turned, I looked, and I saw he was just buffing out the wall. Like, in red. Yeah. In red. And we, we <laughs> as had fast actually, as he can before he gets caught. The, the, um, the request had been put out there by Ward that, like, please just keep your murals, you know, to, to Well, I think in any areas. business, they want everything to be kind of clean, that, you know? You know? <laughs> um, but he did such an amazing job, and, and for him, well, like, okay, art so, is normal. Yeah. Well, so he's freaking out at first. Yeah. Yeah, For sure. and then I'm like, no, 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 we can do this. <laughs> so like, ex if we had just accepted like, oh no, we can't do anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, like we need to buff it out to the gray. Like we'll try and color match that gray and just buff it out so nobody notices that he went there. Yeah. But instead I was like, no, 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 we can make this work. Like I, what I'm gonna do is once he leaves, I'm gonna make that red that he did all kind of funky on the wall. I'm gonna make that into a rectangle. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow he can come back and we, and we will choose some fun colors that he can paint with, and then he can paint over the red. And, you know, he's three, so people would say, like, what's a three-year-old going to paint on a mural? They can only kind of do this kind of thing yeah. at that point, right? Um, but if you give the right boundaries to it, it could actually look pretty cool. So we set up some colors for him the next day. I had painted the red rectangle, so it looks official. You know, you got to stick things <laughs> in, like, a clean box. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just let him go to town, and that's the mural that he painted. And his favorite quote at the time from one of his books was, never give up. So we wrote that on the front there, and we thought that would just be a fun little mural for people to discover as they, you know, explore the area looking at the big murals. And if they stumbled upon it, it would be a fun little surprise for them. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, now he looks at that and he's like, oh, that's old work. <laughs> yeah. Like I want to paint like, a bigger wall. Yeah, it's like there's, there isn't even a Pokemon on there. Dad. <laughs> you know? but, yeah, Pokemon is the, the flavor of the week right now. Yeah, but celebrate your older work as well. That's, a, that's another lesson. Mm -hmm. like it's, it's part of the journey. And, and uh, so now that's kind of something that's normal for him mm -hmm. is that whenever we have a job site, he fully expects to be able to paint somewhere on the wall. That's just a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, what do you choose to accept as the norm? You know, it's really mm -hmm. up to you. All right. And is that our and last I slide? Think I think that's it. I think that's it. So thank you guys Woo! for having us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a short Q&A. Yeah, yeah, totally.